concerns that have come from the Tea Party, I think, are, are rooted in um, a lack of good information. You know, Tea Party ought to be thrilled with the repeal of the RPS and the changes that we made to the renewable fuel standard that makes clear that it is perfectly legal in the state of Florida to sell unblended fuel, which is a big concern for a lot of folks, but particularly folks with boats. And, uh, and we, we made that very clear. In fact, our department under the law is going to create a database where people can go online and find out where they can obtain unblended fuel. That's certainly something that I think fits the philosophical uh, concerns of, of my friends in the Tea Party. The, the other issues include the fact that we're, we're relying on the market uh, to make decisions in this legislation. We're not picking winners and losers. We're not, uh, you know, we are uh, technology agnostic. We're not saying solar is better or biomass is better or wind is better. We're saying that if you spend real capital and put real bricks and mortar in the ground and hire people and actually are producing either renewable fuel or electricity, then you are eligible for a tax credit. It is not an upfront subsidy to help you get there. It is only after you have spent significant amounts of private capital that you have some tax credit for that renewable technology, whatever that technology may be. You have to prove to the marketplace that it will be successful, and then you have to demonstrate it to be eligible for that credit. And it, amount, and it works out to be a penny per kilowatt hour of energy produced. So it is, uh, it is not picking winners and losers. It is unwinding a mandate and creating a, an atmosphere that supports what I think Florida's natural competitive advantages are in this new job-creating sector.